Hello my Soccer Universe and welcome to this week's review of the action in Liga Portugal and La Liga. On the field, arguably, not all that much has happened. In Portugal, all the top four have won more or less convincingly, uh, but they all got wins and it's all headed that Benfica will finish the season as championship champions. And actually, Braga will just out Sporting for the final Champions League spot, given how Sporting have been showing actually quite well in Europe. This is a minor upset for sure. Don't worry, Sporting, you probably scored the goal of the season. And we'll talk about that one for sure. Uh, over in Spain, I have, have to say the biggest headline is not on the field, where Barca again increased uh, their lead but it is off the field. But for that, I actually need to change my jersey because these guys did not make it in the background because their performance on the field was also not that great. It is, of course, Athletic Club. As I said, on the field, not that great. And yes, the colors didn't change all much, but off the field, uh, they actually made quite uh, uh, the headlines this week. Uh, and all in a kind of sympathetic sense and I have have to say I more and more get the athletic club are definitely uh, among the most respected within Spain as well and especially when it comes to heritage. The first one has very much to do with heritage when athletic club asked uh, clubs around the world to wear had to have the goalkeepers wear a black kit in to honor their former uh, goalkeeper uh, Iri Bar for his 80th birthday. Um, I honestly did not know too much. I, I, I just know that he not only was he a uh, rock for Athletic Club, but he also uh, took part in a demonstration towards the end of the Franco regime where he walked out with the Real Sociedad cap captain wearing the Basque flag, which was uh, basically unheard of and a very, very strong statement. And all Spanish club followed and most of Spanish goalkeepers abroad also did follow. So uh, that was already uh, big. That on the back of the last time when Atletico Madrid, their kind of uh, child club, if you want, allowed them to wear their home colors in the away game at Madrid. Uh, it's the second one that I really want to uh, focus a little bit more on because it's a much bigger story and has to do with the team that they played this weekend, Barcelona, where uh, we already know that the Negrera case is, uh, it's really shit, he's hit hitting the fan for Barca, where yes, it seemingly was under the old regime, but there have been payments made. Payments that are not uh, accounted for. And it also has to be said that very much that uh, it's not only that other clubs are going against Barcelona. It's also that the socios themselves want to know what happened with that money. We really want to know. And of course, it is the guys of Bartomeo and uh, previous uh, presidents. I think Rosé is in there. That seemingly have made payments to a company by Negrera, who was the head of the officiating committee or part of the officiating co 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 committee on nominally uh, informing Barcelona on how to what to expect from certain referees and how to behave towards these referees and what costs to, to expect. Uh, some former coaches already came out and said they have never received those memos. Of course, now uh, they have been uh, charged with corruption, meaning that it was, of course, in payment that the referees make sure that there will be no disadvantage to Barcelona, meaning they bought the referees, more or less. And to that um, legal charge, all 18 clubs latched on to, which uh, it's again, it's of a particularity of the Spanish uh, legal system. Uh, to kind of, which also would, would enable the La Liga to come down with uh, measures of punishment, which they said, yeah, it's too long ago at the moment, but you know, UEFA would have an in interest in it. So there, this is an ongoing case. Um, I first have to mention that Real Madrid was the only team that did not join initially, you know, uh, Super League buddies. And it is so uh, galling to see how closely connected the two big rivals at this moment are off the field. Uh, it just doesn't sit well with me. But they also then finally joined because, you know, uh, their club members, well, they say, what are you guys doing? This, there is clearly something not right. And yeah, 
And then we come back to Athletic Club where the fans basically in the game against Barcelona and it has to be said that those two fan bases have always been very well connected and Athletic Club had had a good relationship with Barcelona because uh, historically there are similar causes. There's the Basques uh, Se Se separatist cause that Athletic Club of course supports and there's the Catalan separatist cause that of course Barcelona is very much part of. So the, those two are very much I don't want to say partners in crime, but they understand stand each other. So that the Athletic Club fans who stand up and make a protest against Barcelona and in a very um, decided way in by throwing fake banknotes uh, in Blaugrana with the Barcelona on it, with Dollar Mafia written on it as a protest during the game, I think was a clear sign, you know, there is something clearly, clearly, clearly wrong. Um don't want to say at the moment too much about the Negrea case because it's an ongoing invest investigation. Um, it just nails, it's another nail in the coffin for me. Barcelona used to be, not too long ago, my favorite team in Spain, more, more or less. But I think ever since I started the channel, I more and more lost my taste for Barcelona. And at the moment, they're a team that I really do not, I do not support Barcelona at this moment. And it's a little bit galling to see them go for a title under these circumstances. Okay, let's go back to the action on the field. Let's start in Portugal, where I already said where it more or less went the way you would expect it. Uh, all the big teams winning. Benfica beat Family Cow uh, the first weekend of March. 2-0, Gonzalo Ramos scoring both goals, you know. Just getting the job done. Sporting similarly uh, with a 1-0 away win um, at Portimonense. Uh, where Pedro Gonçalves actually missed a pep penalty. And it's a late Paulinho goal that keeps Sporting in the running. Because they really would like to have, of course, this third place spot. Um, the last time we talked about Porto had a horrid game where they lost at home. Um, also thanks to two red cars going going the way. This time it went the other way. Yes, they had already a 2-0 lead at the half at Chavez uh, through, a to, um, uh, through Danny and Otavio. Uh, but then Vittorio Benjamin uh, gets them back in the game. Yo is in sand off. Um, and then late on, second red card. And then Martinez uh, Tarami assists in stoppage time. Sand the uh, way at the um, uh, team on to winning ways and even Braga bounced back from their derby loss. Uh, meaning that in the upcoming last one, Porto again, we have to talk about was not a very convincing win against Storil. Storil actually a team in trouble. Uh, twice they squandered the lead. Uh, it was 2 1 at the half in the 67th. Raldes pulls, pulls it back, and then Tarami only with a penalty in the 72nd, shortly after that um, equalizer. Sends Porto on the way. However, for Porto, there's a little game happening Tuesday that is probably a teeny bit more important. Of course, we talk about the home game against Inter, where they could make it to the Champions League quarter finals. Um, Benfica. Easy win, wasting many chances. Maritimo was actually in that game. Sure, Mario misses a penalty, then they, they actually had, had had a chance. But uh, as soon as David Neres, just before the half, makes it 1-0 for Benfica. That was a game that was quick, quickly decided. And after that, Sure, Mario adds one and Neres another one. I have to also mention, I saw the highlights. That stadium uh, for Maritimo is so beautifully located uh, on Madeira. It is wonderful. I literally have, have if you have, 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 have seen it. Uh, and especially on the highlights, uh, where it was a little bit like um, uh, a dawn uh, mood. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, at the moment, it looks like they're going down. I really hope, oh, oh, hope not. We need that scenery. And the other Lisbon team, I also mentioned Sporting, um, won in the end rather decidedly and clearly against Boa Vista. However, the talk is about Santos' opener, what a brilliant Rabona kick. I mean, uh, the way the ball falls to him, he could have taken another way. No, he he, he decides to yank it in with, with Rabona and with such a panache, it was brilliant. It was the opener, uh, uh, Crazy Agra on goal, uh, makes it 2-0 at the half and then uh, Paulinho uh, uh, doubles, uh, uh, triples the lead more. more no. 
extends the lead, let's put it that way, and makes it 3-0. Um, if you look now at the overall standings, uh, we have that Benfica, Porto, Braga, Sporting still all up top. Uh, Benfica, the clear favorites, having a, enjoying a very comfortable lead. Uh, with about 10 rounds to go, they have eight points. Looks good enough. And also, I think Braga look like they're holding on to Walters, but with only a small chance for Sporting to get in there, and which is all that we can expect although between Braga and Sporting. It could get tighter because Sporting is just a little bit better uh, as a team overall. And we have seen, I mean, they they could hold their own in the Europa League against Arsenal, which is not that easy. Uh, since we'll be back next round, Classico, uh, here's all the, all, the, all, the, all the games for next week. And we have a Braga-Porto match, match, which I think is a pretty big and tasty one, uh, Benfica play against Guimaraes, so another kind of a traditional duel, uh, Gilles Vicente host Sporting, but that's then after the international break. Going over to Spain, uh, Real Sociedad is, is, is a team that currently are not enjoying great, great form. Uh, Girona is a team you can always watch, although they were 3-0 uh, down at half against Getafe before coming come back, but they usually have very entertaining games. Real get a rare win. Uh, these, these days, I mean, they're still up there, but uh, I always have the feeling that Villarreal uh, is very much underperforming uh, this season. Uh, and they win, of course, at Almeria. Elche, only the second win at Mallorca. It's not going to happen. Elche are going down, unfortunately. But the uh, WTF moment of the weekend came through Atletico Madrid, who probably at this moment have the best player in the league. Although Ter Stegen might have a say in that, but if it's just on, on the field, Antoine Griezmann is just on another level for the entire league. And I think this was also a record-breaking game for CFC Simeone. And how do you celebrate? Not with a dodgy 1-0 win. No, Atletico Madrid went out and destroyed Sevilla 6-1. With two goals by uh, Depay, Griezmann um, adding uh, the, the, the third assisting Kind of Morata, it was a brilliant pass, but in, in the end it uh, assisted out of the cup because there, there was a, um, a, 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 a touch in between. But it was just scintillating what uh, Atletico suddenly are showing. And Atletico kind of slowly get it together and actually could finish this season in good, in, in good form to another third place finish, which is basically where they had their, um, that's what they have subscribed to, with the occasional higher finish. And Siri pulls it back to make it 2-1. Rakitic missed a penalty in between, but it was a really brilliant performance. Uh, brilliant is also what suddenly Real Valladolid are showing. They were in serious relegation uh, trouble, uh, and now they got a win against Espanyol, um, getting their points and potentially not really involved in relegation this season, which is a big achievement. Barcelona against Valencia, what a surprise, 1-0. It continues to be Barca Nacho, although in this case, I um, have to say, this was was probably a 2-0 would have been more correct. Uh, Torres missing a penalty. As soon as Robert Araujo um, got sent off, uh, Valencia suddenly got into the game. Should have gotten a late penalty. Uh, it was almost... and. Just uh, when the Negrera cases come coming up, there were refereeing decisions where you really wonder what's happening here. What is really what's going on? Is this still going on? On on I'm going to think because that penalty, Cassier brought down the Valencia play in the box. There should have been a penalty for Valencia. But I don't want to take away Rafinha scoring the winner, and it's not the first time. Uh, the last time we're gonna hear this, um, Barcelona deserved that win and deserved to win by more than a goal. Also got Galbi said. Athletic Club against Rayo, only a nil-nil. It was overall, except for the Atletico Madrid, not a very goal-filled round. And then an entertaining game with Real, Real Betis and Real Madrid ends in a nil-nil. And again, uh, Madrid dropping points, cannot uh, get up after uh, losing in the cup to Barcelona. Um, and yes, goals could have been scored on E. It decided it was one of those nil-nils that they actually enjoyed watching. But in the end, no goals were scored. Barcelona are even further ahead, and nil nil is also what happened between Osasuna and Celta um, on Monday evening. Uh, the week then thereafter, so past weekend, Real Madrid again looked in trouble when Jose Lu, a brilliant strike, uh, gave Espanyol in pink. I really wonder, can, couldn't they play in the home jer 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 jerseys? 
the, because the, the, there's definitely more blue than white. I think it would have worked. Uh, if Athletic Club can play in their home jersey against Barcelona's away jersey, uh, or third jersey, uh, jersey, the light silvery one, then I think Espanol could be, okay, pinky what was. I really, at that moment you thought, hmm, Real Madrid might, might be in trouble. However, Vinicius Jr. get an equalizer from that moment on the Real Madrid were over the bad team. It was a really nicely uh, played go-ahead goal before the half through Eda Militao, uh, drew many pass uh, far in. It was not, very well played. And then Real Madrid could see it out in the end. In the end, it's Asensio who makes it a 3-1 scoreline. Um, I've said that uh, they're doing good and then they play only 1-1 against LG. But you know, LG have been picking up points <laughs> as of late. Uh, Celta Vigo 3-0 against uh, Rayo Vallecano. Valencia slowly maybe getting some mojo and also getting themselves out of relegation trouble with a 1-0 over Osasuna. Similar as Sevilla over Almeria who actually also were. They were down in the relegation uh, zone and now moved themselves out almost mid-table. That was a pretty big flip. In between Mallorca and Real Sociedad 1-1. Yes, Real Sociedad can score again. It's not enough at the moment. I, If you're a Real Sociedad fan, the only uh, thing that you can hang your head on, because you have now four games in a row without a win, uh, is that your opponents for this fourth spot in Betis and Villarreal are doing not much better, although Villarreal here and there gets uh, a win. And what's even better for uh, Real Sota, Villarreal and Betis only played a 1-1, so basically not not some, not some lost. They didn't lose any, any, any ground, let's put it that way. Um, I really would love to see Real Sota make it to the Champions League. I think it would be an amazing story. However, the big one was Athletic Club against Barcelona. A game with high intensity, as I said, the crowd did their own with the protests against uh, Barca because of the Negrero case. Barca creating chances, however, Athletic Club, especially in the first 30 minutes, pressing the life out of Barca um, and causing quite some havoc. Uh, but it's exactly this last 50 minutes when um, Athletic Club didn't have the energy and in where the Barca strikes. Uh, Busquets plays actually a really brilliant pass to Rafinha who finds him again, sell himself again very open, puts it into the net. It's 1 0 for Barca. Lewandowski probably could have made it two after the half, but after a while, uh, Athletic Club get it going, and it was Ter Stegen who made many great saves. And then again, the referees come to the help of Barca. Uh, there was a really, Barca loses the ball in midfield, the ball gets quickly to Iñaki Williams who yanks it home in the 87th minute. It was a brilliant goal. And in a game that Ter Stegen kind of did his best to uh, keep the clean sheet, uh, it was kind of a little bit of a riff. No, we, we are not going to get, get, get another Barca Nacho win. Um, however, the goal didn't, didn't come because in the build-up, yes, Ike Munoin the touches the ball seemingly with his hand. However, what is not seen, and I find it a mildly controversial uh, decision, why is he touching him? Because he's turning away from um, from uh, Frankie de Jong, who has a very high foot up there to get to the ball. And I honestly think this has to cancel each other out. I didn't find this to, an absolutely right decision. But in the end, Barca get another 1-0 win and are that much closer to the title. And it's really hard to not see Barca winning. And then Atletico Home Club Madrid against uh, Girona also get a win, but it's very, very, very late. Also a long VAR review because the, to figure out whether this, this was offside, it was so tight, but it was after after corner kick that Alvaro Morata taps it in. Atletico Madrid get another win. And so we have Barcelona sitting with nine points clear of Real Madrid. And even less, a bit less favorites than Benfica. Although honestly, uh, it's more, it's probably because there are way more games to be played, and we still have a head-to-head. -head. But at this moment, it's really hard to see Barca not win the title. The way they grind. I mean, look at the goal uh, difference: it's forty-seven to eight. Eight goals Barca conceded. They're one of the most defensively sound teams in Europe, and that's not something you want to say about Barca in any way. It's very anti-Barca, which kind of. Uh, underlines my feeling. As I said, Real Sociedad, while not in the clear, it's only three points ahead of Betis. And 
while I want Real Sociedad a little bit more than Betis, I think Betis would also be a great story to get in. I actually would have liked both of them ahead of either one of the top three to get into the Champions League, but unfortunately, no, not going to happen. But uh, Real Sociedad is still looking overall the best. Look at that relegation battle. Um, arguably, ar- 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 arguably, I mean, probably Girona just out of it, but they have a still 60%. You could start it there, but Sevilla is not in the clear. Real Valladolid, you could always see lo- lo- losing the points. Espanyol, Cadiz, Valencia, Getafe, Almeria. It's very, very... Almeria probably the one that looks uh, of those that looks most certain to go down together with Elche. But everything else... Hmm wide open wide 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 open uh at the moment is my model says it's still real Valladolid because of their inferior rating and because they are the smallest team in there but i wouldn't call it you see it's rather 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 tight on top everything is pretty clear it's basically who is gonna finish top four between betis and real sociedad i will make a video next week because you see the last game Barcelona, Real Madrid, and also before the international break. So uh, we'll talk, of course, about that. Although this seems to be a Clásico that is the least important in a long, 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 long time because there's no title decided. Barcelona is going to win the title. Uh, but we might uh, delude ourselves that there is a title chase. Uh, Atletico Madrid play Valencia. I think that's an interesting one. Uh, can Real Sociedad bounce back against Elche? Betis against Mallorca? Hmm. There's some stuff. And then Valladolid against Athletic Club, just because we've talked about these two teams quite a bit. So I want to mention that here as well. Any case, please let, let me know what you thought about the happenings in Spain and Portugal over the past two weeks. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel. See more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!